Okay, so today we're going to start our electromechanical system transfer functions. So basically section 2.8 in the book. So in other words, we're going to start we're going to derive the transfer function of a physical system, which is our DC motor. Okay. Now, if you look at this footnote, it says there is a derivation of this schematic from physics. So I recommend that you go online and look at the derivation. I tried doing this once in class and it was like a disaster because it involved like basic physics. Right. So I'm not going to do it in the sense uh, we're just going to let me just open this up and get this picture. Just look at this. Take a snapshot. Ah. Let's zoom in. Let me do this. All right, there you go. So today, five lecture two. So uh, DC motor, okay, which is basically an electro mechanical system. Okay. So it's a physical system for which we're going to derive the transfer function based on this schematic, right? So what do you mean by an armature? So some fundamental concepts, okay? So basically section 2.8 DC motor. So let's talk about some fundamental concepts. So what's a motor? So a motor is a device in terms of energy. What does a motor do? Yeah, that's exactly. So what's the, it converts electrical to mechanical. So what's the inverse of a motor called? That is conversion from, let's say, mechanical, sorry? Generator. So mechanical means like, look, uh, in a generator, the mechanical could be like wind turbines, right? That we're not talking about. Like what is the, but we're not actually going to talk about generators. But even with the DC motor, right, ultimately we're going to drive some load. Okay, and that could go through a gear ratio as we will see, right? But the point of this uh, section is to derive the transfer function for this picture. But then let me complete this as device con that converts electrical to mechanical energy. And for us, we're only dealing with DC, okay, not AC. We're not talk going to talk about AC motors. So in other words, you have a voltage, okay, usually there's a constant. And the output is, uh, what's an armature? What's the armature? The rotating part, right, the rotor, okay. So uh, we're going to look at the angular displacement of the armature. You see that? That's our output variable. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So the rot we're going to look at the um, angular displacement of the rotor. The armature is basically this electrical part, right? So uh, let's see. D -d -d how do I? Okay, let's do this. Let's do it this way. So what we want is G of s, okay, which is E of s input theta of s output, okay? So g of s is theta of s over ea of s, okay? All right. Uh, so before we derive this, let's see, how do, you, um, how do I want to do this? That's what I'm thinking. Okay. Let's just physically see what the form of the transfer function should look like. So what is, should this look like? So let's think. You put a DC voltage in, okay? So think about a DC motor you get from Radio Shack. Right? You put a DC voltage into that motor, what happens to the output shaft, the rotor? It spins, it rotates, yes? So what do you, uh, so okay. So if this is a constant in the time domain, what is EA of S? So let's do it this way. So let's say, uh, consider constant voltage input 
to a DC motor. Yes. Therefore, this implies EA of T is some VDC U of T. Yes. How's that? Okay. We want to try and make an educated guess about the form of G of S. Okay. And this is important because before deriving any physical model, you should have an idea of what intuitively it should be, right? That it should be like a third order polynomial, like third order transfer function with a third order denominator polynomial. Um, you can try and make an educated guess about the form of G of S. So in other words, uh, let's see. So given one, what is theta of t? Ah, let's do that. Okay. Now, now we're warming up. At least my brain is warming up. So what happens physically? So you put in a constant voltage. The shaft rotates, yes? So what does theta of t? Give me a function for theta. You understand the question or no? That's the first thing. There are only two variables, man. There's E, which has become constant. Yes? So I put in a DC voltage into a motor. The shaft rotates. Yes? You can visualize that, right? Okay. Having visualized that, what... So theta is the angle of the shaft, right? The angle of displacement. Yes? So what is it... So before the... Even guessing the form of the function, uh, what is it like? like uh, I don't know how else to say it, right? So, the, no, is it oscillating? That's a good question. Is it oscillating? I told you it's a DC motor, right? It's is it constant? It's not constant. So initially, of course, it accelerates, right? But at steady state. What does it look like? These are all good points, right? So is it initially accelerating? Yes, it has to, right? It has to start from zero. Good point, right? Is this velocity? No, it's not, right? It's angular displacement. So what happens to the velocity at steady state of the output? It's a constant. Is that clear? So let's do that. So uh, given one, let's do that. Let's, so omega of t, at, let's even be more specific, right? So these are all good points. This is, how, this, is how, this is how I want you to think, right? So omega steady state is constant. Okay? Agreed? So this implies omega. So one point, I'm not going to write the steady state anymore, okay? It's good we talk about this. Why should I not write the steady state anymore? So going back, what are we trying to find? The transfer function, yes? So how is the transfer function defined? You, you ignore initial conditions, yes. But the transfer function is, we are assuming the system is at steady state. Okay. Makes sense? All the initial conditions have died out. They're zero when you derive the transfer function. And we're assuming the system is stable. Okay? So omega of S, so I'm going to drop the steady state, okay? So let me ask you this. So omega of T is constant. Omega of S, how can I write omega of S in terms of theta of S? It's S theta S, okay? Is that clear? So let's now, again, this is, I mean, I, every time I do this, I do this differently. Okay. Last time I did this, I didn't do it this way, which is, it's fine, right? Because the point is trying to make an educated guess about the form of this transfer function. There are many ways to do it. This is one way. Right? We're on the right track, I can tell you that. So let's go going back up here. Therefore, G of S equals 
uh, let's see. So theta of s, let's see, that's one. So let's call this zero. Let's call this two. I'm going to substitute two in zero, right? So what do I get? I get g of s. So here is our. So what happens if I substitute two in zero? What do I get? G of s equals what? Uh, no, be careful. Let's zoom out. Zoom out even more. Okay. So I take this and I plug it in here. So what is g of s equal to? Yes, 1 over s, omega s, over ea of s. Okay? All right. Now, let's see, I have 1 g of s equal, so it's omega of s over ea of s times s. Yeah? Let's see. Okay? So let's keep uh, do, going with this. So from 1, if ea of t is some dcu of t, yes, what is ea of s? So it's, huh? What is it? VDC over S. Okay? So in other words, what I get is SG of S, VDC over S equals W of S. Okay? So let's keep going. Did I, did I not invert it? Let's see, let's see, basic math. Mm. Wait a minute. Yeah, okay. So it's S, G of S. No, what I did was right. Okay? All right. So now, let's see if you can guess the form of G of S. Okay. Huh? Sorry? It's not mu, it's u. u is the unit step function, correct? So I put a step voltage at zero. So if you plot this, okay, how about this? If you plot this, this is what it looks like. So Ea has a function of time just like that. So you go to some DC voltage. Initially, there was no voltage. And at zero, you apply DC. Okay? The shaft starts spinning, and at steady state, you get a constant velocity. Okay? All right. So now, let's try to guess the form of G of S. Okay? So, so is this clear? All so far? Okay? So what? So start guess. Let's start putting together some forms for G of S. So start. So yes. All right. So let's see if this would be. A okay. Okay. That's good. So Jacob, that's great. All right. So Jacob's guess is. This would be some alpha over s, okay? So let's try, right? Let's see if this works. So there's a question mark. Let's call this gj right, for Jacob, right? So what happens? So this w of s, uh, let's see, 0, 1, 2, let's call this 3. Therefore, uh, 3 implies w of s is alpha over s vdc 
Yes? But then, what is W of T? So it is going to be alpha VDC U of T. Yes? What is this all this all man, I'm glad I'm doing it this way. What is theta of T? So it's good, alright? If it's one over S, it seems like Omega of t is constant, okay? But then what's theta of t? So you, so remember, our omega is constant. That's one condition. But we still haven't figured out, I mean, we know what theta is. The shaft continuously spins. But then let's see if this, um, whatever, this thinking, line of thinking, gives us the correct theta. Okay, so what's theta? So how is theta and u related? Let me ask you that. Or theta, not u. Ah, omega. How are these two related? Theta is going to be what? The integral of omega, yes? So what happens, so what's the integral of this step function? Huh? Alpha VDC what? T U of T. You integrate a step, you get a ramp, okay? So, does this agree physically? Let's see. So what is, so if you plot this, what does theta look like? Huh? Like this, yes? So is this what happens physically to theta? Huh? No. Yes. This is not the speed. So what is this saying? Angular velocity is constant. So it's not going to fall apart, right? What does this say about, I mean, physically, is this what happens? Yeah, this is what happens, right? The angle keeps on increasing. Now, when you're interfacing to a motor, you basically have, it's usually a digital back end, and your register overflow. So you do a mod 2 pi. So once you cross 2 pi once, it's periodic, right? So you reset it back to zero. That's a different thing. Is that clear? So this is good. So it turns out this is very, very close, right? So physically, so bottom line is physically G of S does have an integrator, okay? But it also has a decaying exponential point. That, that's what it turns out, the actual model, right? So this is, I mean, you guys are better than my previous section, that you at least got this. Well, Jacob got it, but, so you understand how, from here, you can check, right? Question? Right, right. Uh, it's, it's fine, all right, so you can, in the sense, as long as you cite Jacob, it's okay, all right? <laughs> but you understand, right, this is how you, this is called, System identification, right? So in 30, 50, 37, 20, it's fortunately un or unfortunately done for you that this is the model of a DC motor, okay? Our goal is going to be to derive constants alpha and beta. And you derive that based on physics. Physics is like the ultimate, right? The ultimate science. So, but is this clear? This is system identification. And let's say you take 4720, we'll give you a, um, the magnetic levitation system, right? 
And for that, you have to do something similar, some similar stuff, right? You have to try and guess the form of G of S based on your physics. And then derive the appropriate constants again based on physics. Okay. That's one system we give in 4720. The other system is the uh, inverted pendulum, the VSEC bot, right? Uh, so for that, the inverted pendulum, you it turns out the transfer function is not the best way to approach it because it's a two degree of freedom system. Okay. And state space is the best approach. So the hardest part of uh, designing controllers, let's say you work for, I don't know, um, Rockwell Collins, or who's the other big military uh, contractor, like Raytheon, right? You design controllers for them, the hardest part of your job will be this, okay? Trying to get this. And of course, it's not going to be this simple, right? It's going to involve multiple degrees of freedom, many parameters. It's going to involve a lot of iterations, but you should know, like, all of this don't code, right? That is, if omega is given by this, theta has to be given by this because theta is the integral of omega. That's why you're in school to learn all this. So if you're not down cold with this, the signs, everything, then you're, that's, that's your job, right? Okay? Getting the signs and all exactly correct, like all this you should not forget. If you're gonna do control engineering, if you're not gonna do control engineering, you're gonna forget all this. The way it is. But then you should know enough basics so you can quickly, in a couple of days, on your job, you learn all this. You go back to your notes or go online, whatever. Now we have access to the internet and stuff. Just look up the necessary information and you're ready. That's why you go to college, right? To get all these basics down. So you're given anything in your job, you're, you're ready to face it. All right. So now we're going to derive alpha and beta. So, uh, the process of system identification, that's what it's called, system ID. There's actually a MATLAB toolbox for this called system identification. System ID involves obtaining a mathematical model. So let me write out what we're going to do in this class in the sense right now we are doing transfer function or state space using uh, physical principles, okay? Physics. So in the, our case, we, uh, let me call this one again. So we're gonna start afresh. We need to find alpha, beta appropriate units so as you're doing this derivation, you got to keep checking your units, okay? What are the units of um, theta? Okay, so appropriate units. What are the units of theta? Radians, not degrees, okay? What are the units of omega? Radians per second. What else we got? You got Ea, right? So what are the units of Ea? Volts, right? Appropriate units, uh, we need to find alpha, beta. Okay, so let's get started. So let me copy this sucker. Oops. Uh, cut that. Now I can copy it. Okay, so recall our DC motor schematic. All right. So let's start the derivation. So looking at this picture, what do we do first? So it's an electromechanical system. Yes? Fire away. Thoughts. What do we do? Nothing comes to your mind when you look at this. I mean, come on. Something should fire. Huh? What did Derek say? You're not being recorded. It's like gaming mic. What did he say? Thank you. Huh? Oh, early dismissal? Mm. Well, then you have to derive it. Well, it's in the book. Yeah. Chris, any ideas? Excellent. All right. You can convert everything to one domain. You can go mechanical, 
into sorry electrical into mechanical right an equivalent mechanical system and just work with that okay so that's chris's idea so chris and this is a good idea right convert all systems to one domain okay that is we go from electrical that's his suggestion to mechanical the equivalent mechanical system so we can do that but let's let's do, let's go with this convert to one domain concept that's what we're going to use from here couldn't i write the system equations for the electrical part in the s domain the mechanical part also in the s domain and then that will both be in one domain yes so this convert to one domain is what we're going to do but we're going to combine them in the s domain right so we need to find out the s domain equations for the electrical part and the s domain equations for the mechanical part yes so let's do it that way so going off what chris said so let's look at the electrical so how do i so here is the electrical part yes so let's see first of all if we understand where each of these comes from although we're not going to go through the derivation it's online right the physics look at this what is ra mean so let's just start labeling these what do you think ra is yeah the armature coil resistance how would you measure this yeah ohm meter right so you get ohm meter across the terminals wait till, till it stabilizes right it's probably the resistance what is la the winding i'll write it as inductance it's correct it's impedance because it's given a la here okay so I'm in the time domain agreed that's a fair enough uh, so the question is hey why don't i have a capacitor here okay the answer is physically the inductance matters more than the capacitance what's vb what's this so yeah so what is this called and this is the it's actually the rotor yes so it's the voltage at the rotor like wh why does this occur so there's a sp there's a term for this okay yeah it's called what like john said like jp said what is it called back emf what does emf stand for the electromotive force so what do you mean by back emf yeah uh, when the turns, it'll, it'll also act as yes so that's it so like chris said when this rotor spins it's going to generate a voltage but it's obviously going to oppose this voltage right it can't add to this there's no perpetual motion so this is where physics again comes in sign you see plus minus so if you screw this up and put plus minus like this gone right but let's say you do screw this up and put plus minus like this you forget basic physics i mean whatever you're just doing this and as you're doing the derivation you should be like wait a minute something's wrong right and then you should go back and like oh shoot just reverse okay so these are the salient features of the model and this system i reprocess it varies from system to system right and this just takes experience figuring out which is important which parameter is important which is not and it depends on the context right let's say you are having a really high frequency dc motor then probably node capacitance will come into play right so the same look there's no such thing as a perfect model right? there is no such thing as the electrical there's no such thing as a linear resistor that's a model your little carbon filament resistor acts like a linear resistor 1k for a pretty good range of voltage right? you'll be surprised like how like it's pretty well within 10% it's pretty good right? that's why people use it if the model sucks nobody would use it right? but that's all it is so just remember that and yeah this like i told you this now the class gets it's fun now hopefully but you should know state space really well right? that's why the next two weeks there are no homework assignments so work on your signs and stuff and like i said if you did bad in exam 1 let's say you ace the final it's i think it's only 10% is exam 1 right so even if you like got only 50% on exam 1 you can still get an a in the course right assuming you do well on the rest of the exams they're all very intuitive but you got to be careful you can't like 
you can only rely on intuition so much, all right? We're going to get into now equations. You really cannot avoid math. It'll get you somewhere. All right. So, that's all we can milk the electrical part. So now let's start writing the system of equations. So looking at this electrical picture, forget this mechanical for now. So here is the electrical part, including back EMF. Let's not do it directly in the S domain. We can, but let's start, let's start in the time domain. So tell me how you write the system equations for this. What do you do? I can wait all day, but we don't have all day. We have 20 minutes. We're not going to finish this derivation today. We'll continue next time. Next lecture, we are on tap for nonlinear systems. That's only like 10 minutes. So we're not going to get into that, that too much. This is very important. So start. Nothing comes to mind when you look at this. Okay, I'm circling. Yeah, KVL. So Kirchhoff's voltage law, right? We all know that. So let's start. Let's go around the loop like this. So start here at this node and go around clockwise. What do you get? Huh? S no, no, let's keep it in the time domain. Let's do time domain. We can write it in the S domain, but let's start in the time domain. It's just because. More practice going from time domain to S domain. So what happens? Uh, start here. Yeah, so you go up by EA. So I'm going to use the physics notation. So I go up by EAT. So what about this guy? There's a voltage drop across here, correct? You have to assign the direction of voltage drop. The current flow he has given you in this direction, right? So let's just use that. Let me call this VA. Let me call this plus or minus VL. What did I call it VA? I have no idea. Let's call it VR. Okay. So tell me in terms of the voltages. Don't tell me in terms of currents here. So let's do it step by step. So you drop by VR. You drop by VL. Uh, the VB still opposes it, right? Correct? And I'm not going to write functions of time. These are all functions of time, right? Okay. So now, let's start writing. So EA of T is the input, so I'm going to move it to one side of the equation. So here is VR plus VL plus VB, all our functions of time equals EA of T. I'll put EA of T explicitly because I don't want you to think it's a constant. Eventually, we're going to put in a constant, right? All right, now let's start right in terms of I because these are too many unknowns, yes? So I can, it's a single loop circuit. So what can I do with VR? Yeah, so just IA times R. What about VL? Remember, yeah, so I think it was LA or RA. How do you call it? RA. Okay. IA, RA plus LA, DIA, DT plus VB. Now you're going to be like, what do I do with VB? Right? VB is not really a circuit element. Yes, it's the back EMF produced by the rotor. So let me leave VB as it is equals EA of T, but from physics, the back EMF VB is proportional, so it's equal to KB times angular velocity. Okay, that's from physics. Okay? So let's plug that in there. Therefore, let's call this equation 2, equation 3, of t. Yes? Okay? So it's actually good we are doing this in the time domain first because um, we'll eventually take the Laplace transform. Right? You can see the physics a little better in the time domain. All right. Now we're going to... So basically, 
we are now in this part okay so we are right here we're starting to go to the mechanical part so we might as well start looking at the mechanical subsystem okay since so i'm these are just thoughts in my head since let's see since 4 involves omega of t let us uh, look at mechanicals subsystem okay recall we are looking for g of s is theta of s over ea of s okay that's what we want now we have a theta in here yes it's d theta dt but it's there and when you take the laplace transform you just get s theta of s that's good okay um what's the so this is good this is good what about this i what do we do with it? the i is a problem right we don't want the i there yes so here comes physics to the rescue in four from physics let me see what notation your book uses just call it tau all right so the torque okay he calls it tau m right so here is tau m so that's the torque on this turns out do you know what the motor torque is proposed so he calls it tm of t you know how it's related to the armature current the torque is turns out is proportional to the armature current right so the back emf um sorry yeah the back emf is pro proportional to shaft velocity for a dc motor the torque is proportional to current is that clear it's not proportional to the voltage that's the point it's just the physics of the motor it's a common mistake which people make more current more the torque right for a dc motor it's just the physics if you're interested stop by my office and we'll drive it yeah yeah that's right so chris makes a good point the issue is people ignore this okay this makes a big difference to the voltage we are going to we are going to ignore this in the simplified model right but the bottom line is the torque is proportional to uh, current right so how does this help us so if you know the torque like yeah i can eliminate current yes but let's do this from physics this also for simplicity in 4 la is approximately zero okay because where the winding inductance actually matters is when you start the motor right initially is where this thing comes in okay but for simplicity we're going to set la equal 0 therefore 4 implies what so tm of t over kt that's ia right here okay times ra plus kb omega is yes now how the heck do i re relate this torque to this theta well, give me like a so is that clear so far so we just have to relate the rotor torque to the rotor angular displacement so how do i do it let me see Mm. Chris is right. Second derivative of what? How is the torque related? In other words, torque is the second. Uh, 
So torque is like a, it's the rotational equivalent of force, right? No. Impedance, a lot of terms floating out. You guys got to say it right. You're, you're, I see where both of you are getting at, Chris and Scott, but is torque, is the angular displacement the second derivative of the torque? No, Chris, is angular displacement, so is this true? It's the other way around. So tau equals I times alpha, right? Correct? So what we're going to do, we're going to go off of that, but add Scott's point that, so to eliminate Tm of T, we are going to consider the moment of inertia. Consider the rotor moment of inertia and let's see what does your book do? I think he does put in the uh, rotational damping. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it does have a rotational dampener in there. So you're going to consider the rotor as having inertia and dampening. Because if you think about it, it really doesn't, there's no torsional flexion, right, on a standard motor. So the, there's no like K there. Is that clear? Again, this is physics, right? So physics. Yeah, it could be the friction, right? Good point. The friction as the rotor spins, right? Yeah, that's a very good physical model. Right? Okay, so let's see. I think that's all. Therefore, what time is it? We're running out of time. Uh, let me just, uh, let's see. Here is DC motor. So here is the electrical part. Okay. Basically, we have the motor torque and the motor displacement. Yes, well, he calls it theta of M in the book. I think I'm just going to use theta. Right, so let me go back up here. Hold on, it's correct. Let me just call this theta. That's that's what I use. So, all right. So this is connected to a J. And what is the symbol for this? I think this is a symbol. A D. All right. So let me just stop here in the sense. Therefore. The applied torque is opposed by J, theta double dot, this is what Chris said, okay, plus D, theta dot. Yes? That's it. So I'll stop here. We still have five more minutes, but I want to continue this. Because here it is, okay? So these two equations, we combine, we can eliminate the torque, everything will be in terms of theta and Ea. And you can see there are a bunch of constants which are floating around, okay? They'll become my alpha and beta. Okay? So our next lecture, we'll finish this up and we're basically done with chapter two, right? So let's, since we have five minutes, let's take a look at where we are going again just to get a picture. Org, see if that works. Okay, so this is not what we want, but we want this. So, so we, we. All right. So, wait, is this thirty? Yeah. Come on. Come on. All right. So we are basically here, and tomorrow we're going to finish this DC's. I should not have it in servo motor because there's no, well, you're going to put feedback around it. I'll show you how you make it into a servo, but it may not be next lecture, okay? Anyway, so tomorrow we're going to finish chapter two. Next week, we are going to get into state space, okay? State space is very mathematical. It's much more mathematical than transfer functions. 
So this one is, unless you're linear algebra, basic linear algebra. Skills are, oops, are not, are not good, then you'll find state space very difficult, okay? However, that's why your next homework is not due for another week. So again, the goal is uh, for you to get set on basic math, because like I said, if you, oh, it's 20%, okay. So you still, it's not 10%, but still, you can, you can get a good grade if you ace the um, next midterm and the final, right? But I warn you that although this might look very easy, what I recommend you do, okay, this is what I told my other class. What you should do is when you look at my videos or lecture notes or what I read the book, you shouldn't just like try to copy like from the book directly. In the sense, what you should do is, okay, read the book, close the book, and then try to do it on your own. That's how you really test if you understand this or not. Okay, so try that. So go home today, okay, later in the evening, for example. See if you can, okay, see if you can derive this from scratch. That is, if you can get these two equations. Maybe you have to do a couple of passes with the lecture, the book reading, that's fine. The point is, you should not have something open next to you and then try to do it. You don't really learn much if you really think about it. You think you do, but you really don't. So take the next two weeks to work on that. Right? And this class is actually, it's helpful in that respect. It's not like electromagnetism where it's like, whew, electromagnetism is tough. So this is not like that. All right. So if you have sent me emails about the exam, I've gotten it, I'll respond to it. Okay. So yeah, like I said, you have till next week to fix any errors next Monday on your exam. Right? So I did, a couple of people pointed out errors already and I've been fixing them. So yeah. Uh, we'll see you next lecture. Ah, come on. Stop. <laughs>